<laughs> we are still on God's love. Amen. <laughs> the greatest war on a Christian is not for a Christian to fall into sin. It is for a Christian not to pray, not to read the word, not to fast, not to give, not to walk in love, not to embrace one another with a holiness. The greatest challenge of Christians is not overcoming sin. The greatest challenge of a Christian is keeping the disciplines of the kingdom. Ay, 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 Mungot's idea. Lift up your hand, say, Lord, by your mercy, let me keep the disciplines of our kingdom. Say again, say, Lord, by your mercy, help me to keep the disciplines of the kingdom. They set a law to prevent Daniel to pray. Daniel said, Nyinyam nijui. I will not transgress in this. He opened the windows, faced Jerusalem, and began to pray. And he prayed morning, afternoon, and evening. Kamadawa. Ah, buwana sifiwe. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, your routine determines your discipline. I wish you would decay your chin. Now we personalize. My routine determines my discipline. What do you do every day? Because every the thing you do every day determines your character. It determines your disciplines. That's why tutasema anaombaga. Kwa nini? Nikiamkasubui nitaomba. Ukiniletea chakula nitaomba. Nikipanda mat nitaomba. Kabla ni drive nitaomba. Nikikaa chini nisikie niko na spare time nitaomba. So, hiyo routine ya ninaombaga imecreatiwa na discipline ya maombi imecreatiwa na routine. Repetition creates routine. Routine leads you to discipline. And discipline builds your character. Ukiwa mtu unasomanga word. Unasema every day ni itasomanga three chapters. Ukisoma three chapters every day for a whole year. Umesoma the whole Bible. Ukisoma two books a day in one month umemaliza the whole Bible. Ukisoma one book a day in two months umemaliza the whole Bible. Ukisema ni itasomanga three chapters a day. Na ni keep discipline. Character ya kuridu word itaingia. It is not what you do a lot. It is what you do in portions oftenly. I'm giving secrets here. Mtu wangu si vile uliomba sana kesha. Unajua kuna wase uku janga kesha. And they pray riku topra kaba for three hours. And then the whole month they have not prayed. <laughs> and then they, unayeka kwa Facebook, looking forward to the kesha. The underlining statement, nitaenda niombe. No, it is not that. It is not what you, it is not what you do a lot. It is what you do in portions oftenly. Praise the Lord. And the devil will fight for you not to do it. The devil will fight your morning prayer. He will fight your fellowship attendance. He will fight your commitment to your service in your church. He will fight so that you don't become a giver. You complain at those who give in the, word or in the, in the, in the house of God. He will fight for you not to walk in love. He will fight for you not to show mercy unto others. For you not to forgive. He will fight. He will fight to hinder you from going to that mission. 
Unaamka hivi, ume prepare wiki mzima asubuhi kiamko unafikia ka headache kidogo unasema, "Mwanzo nilisikia kitu inaniuma, sitaweza kwenda mission." Instead ya kuamka useme, "Rutini yangu nilikuwa nimejiprepare. I rebuke this hindrance in Jesus name." Na unatoka una, one time I was chosen to be praise and worship leader in 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 my former church, GRC. Gospel Revival Center Dandora. I was to be the worship leader. I was preparing myself the whole week. Fasted, prayed. Then Sunday asubuhi kuamka, saa tisa vile na mkaka kupray, unaamka unaanza kusikia tumbo inauma. Una hara, yani crazy things. Na mimi nikaambia devil, skiza. Au nijui. Niliamka na hiyo struggle nikavaa suti. Nikiumwa na tumbo. I prayed nikiumwa na tumbo na haikuisha Nikatoka pole pole nikaenda stage nikaingia mat nikaenda church vile nilifika kwa gate nikasema I enter his gates with thanksgiving nikasikia tumbo imeisha hiyo maumivu ya tumbo imeisha because the devil will hinder you not to do what you are supposed to do Paul says what I am supposed to do I do not what I don't want to do I find myself doing That is why you find yourself you are hooked to porn your phone has bibles but you are watching porn why because the thing you want to do the thing you are supposed to do you are not doing the enemy will entice you so that you don't do what you are supposed to do so that you enter into trespass from transgression you enter into trespass then from trespass he makes it a routine so that it becomes an iniquity and so god revealed his son jesus christ so that the iniquities may be removed so that the transgressions may be wiped away god sent his son he gave that word giving there is not just giving like ametoa akakupatia it is sacrificially giving it pained god to send his son i usually say it many times why did god have to send jesus christ why was it jesus christ that had to come and die for us because the father has no form the son is the one that has the form of the father napenda nga hiyo song ya nani anaitangwaje ile ako na form eh god ndiye ako na form hallelujah hiyo song iko na rev mtu wangu god ndiye ako na form because god dwells in jesus bodily jesus said to the disciple if you see me you've seen the father the holy ghost does not have a form he is a spirit but he is manifested in jesus that's why i say it is jesus who will baptize with the holy spirit and with fire jesus is the center of theology and pneumatology pneumatology is the study of the spirit theology is the study of the father christology is the is the center of theology and pneumatology because he is the form of the father he is the tangible presence of the intangible father he is the tangible manifestation of the intangible spirit of god he is the terrestrial extraterrestrial ah uh. the physical of the spiritual when you want to see the father look at jesus now notice this in the old testament according to the law every iniquity demanded a sacrifice that's why they took a burnt offering for iniquity and they took a sin offering for trespass and they took a peace offering for transgression 
Now Jesus became our burnt offering. Why? Because his body was offered to be consumed in our punishment. The fire of our punishment was lit on the body of Jesus Christ. That is why he was given as a burnt offering for us. Ah, that is so powerful. He died for us that we may live unto him. Niskie. Jesus died for you that you may live for him. Somebody died for this gospel so that somebody might live preaching this gospel. Ah. Many of us dishonor the gospel, yet we don't know there is a price paid for it. This gospel is not only costly. It costed lives. Somebody died for it so that you may live preaching it. Jesus died for your sins so that you may live unto his righteousness. The public display of the Father's affection in your life is that Jesus was sacrificed. He was committed to the consuming of your punishment so that you may live unto the Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, Thank you, Father, for the death of Jesus. And thank you, Father, for my life unto Jesus. The second higher dimension of the blood is where the blood has a voice and it speaks over your life. The Bible says Jesus was made a mediator of the better covenant, established upon better promises. And this better covenant is of the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, than the blood of bulls, and the blood of gold. The blood of a goat could only cry out because of the substitution. But the blood of Jesus, it is human godly blood. It is godly blood that not only blots away your transgressions on earth physically, but it erases your past and the effect thereof, and it ensures the security of your future. The blood of Jesus is the consultant for who you are going to become. The blood of Jesus is the voice for who you should be who you are going to turn out to be the blood of Jesus is the witness unto the works of God in the book of ordinance concerning your life so when you look at the cross there is the other side let us go over to the other side there is a higher dimension of the the blood of Jesus, the blood speaks the affection of God over your life so that if you are to die, the blood speaks and says, I have anointed where you are seeking. I am still speaking. You cannot kill this daughter because your works are written in the book before they come to be. If this daughter dies, then what you are thinking will be terminated. That is why Jesus is at the right hand of the throne interceding and pleading with the blood. He is ever sprinkling. He is ever praying. He is 
is ever showing the marks of his suffering. He is ever saying, Father, this is your passion towards your daughter. This is your passion towards your son. This is the token of the sacrifice laid that is speaking towards your thought over her life. That is why you have to bless her because of this you have to anoint her because of this you have to give her another chance she cannot die now because if she dies what you said concerning her will come to a stop but this will ensure that her future becomes all that he ordained it to become the affection of the father is through the broken body and the blood of Jesus. Amen. That is why when we pray in the dimension of the blood, we don't pray like sinners. The scriptures come alive. There are your thoughts concerning me. And the blood is the token for the representation of the surety of your word. Because the holy blood has anointed the very place where God sits. The very seat of God has been sprinkled by holy blood. God bled and he abashandabarokakarte prios. The blood called down on the very seat of God the very mercy ufumilivu ya mungu in a bleed juyako in a bleed juyako in a bleed juyako that is why when God wants to destroy you Jesus intercedes by the power of the spirit presenting the blood saying father she cannot die today she cannot perish today you cannot let this curse overrun her you cannot let the devil take this blessing from her i am witness to what you ordained in her life i suffered and i obeyed your word that you blotted out her transgressions you blotted out her trespasses you blotted out her iniquities now father as your word has promised because of this holy blood release your blessing this is the token of your love these are the marks of your affection this is where the church came from that is why you're still coming to church even if you fell yesterday that is why they can't understand how you fell yesterday and you're still worshiping today how you fell yesterday and you're still presenting your tithe today it is because when you wake up in the morning routine you bleed the blood of jesus when i walk on the road the blood speaks my righteousness they Therefore, no weapon forged against me shall prosper. Ah, yeah, yeah. And I have said, no weapon forged against you shall prosper. Let me teach you an easy way to rebuke a devil out of a person's life. When they refuse to go, yes, sir. you tell him, I serve the God who created you. <laughs> public display of God's affection. This is the public display of God's affection. God loves you to hell and back. Ah, ah. They say they can cross Jogorod closing their eyes for you. God says, I loved you to hell and back to their fathers according to their generations that's why when Lazarus died let me tell you the parables of Jesus are not parables they are real historic events and he went and was gathered to his father I have reason to believe this is the Lazarus that Jesus raised 
Because the rich man was told, even if a man comes from the dead. Yes, sir. Ay, 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 ay. Badu jaybata. You remember the conversation between Abraham and the rich man? Abraham was in Sheol and the rich man was in hell. Sheol and hell were in the same location. Why? Because Abraham could see Lazarus, uh, could see the rich man. And he said to the rich man, there is a portal. A portal ni kama vile umeshaeka mkono hivi ukaingiza kwa homo. That it looked like a membrane, but you can see the other side. That was that form. It is what was separating Sheol and hell. What an teaching mystery. Now, that's why Abraham could converse with Lazarus. Because them that died in the faith were gathered to their fathers. Them that died in sin went to hell. Now, when Jesus died, he went and preached to the souls that were imprisoned. The city of death has been placed, it has been tamed, and it has been placed in your tongue. The power of life and death. Now, when Jesus resurrected, Matthew chapter 24, 52, he resurrected, the Bible says after his resurrection, he did not come out alone. Pastor Mark touched it yesterday. He said he came out, Buddha unatakuona horror. Horror ni mass resurrection. I think we should try mass resurrection one day. Go to a graveyard and say, all the sons of God in this place. Mahartu kurke dishtaba. Wake up! If Jesus did it and he said, greater things shall you do more than this. Ay, 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 ay. Let me tell you something. Now, he shifted Sheol to paradise, to the presence of God. That's why they appeared and then they disappeared. They appeared in the physical, greeted their people and said, now we are going to a better place. And they disappeared. That's why when you, you don't die, death opens the doors and you walk to the other side. <laughs> Watch this. And you leave your body to your family. Oh. So that they handle it. Yeah. So that if they are the dead, the dead will bury. Yeah. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey. The greatest power of a Christian is not overcoming sin. The greatest power of a Christian is living the zoe the god kind of life because when you live this kind of life you are showing in your body that jesus resurrected you are showing in your body that jesus is alive you are showing in your very body that the blood is speaking that is why now we go to paradise that is why we live forever God loved you so much that he had to pay all that price so that you may be with him. And if you're not born again, he says, I am at the door of your heart. I'm still knocking. You refuse today, I'll come back tomorrow. You refuse tomorrow, I'll come back the next day. You refuse the next day, I'll still come back again. I'll come back and I'll be knocking on your door until the day you accept me because I have good plans for you my will is not that you die my will is not that you go to hell I shifted the imprisoned souls from hell to tell you that even if anyone can cast you into hell I can take you out of there Hallelujah. let me tell you something the people that go to hell are not sinners they are the people who are fools they refuse the work of Jesus Christ they refuse to believe. They refuse God. Every day he has been talking to you. He has been showing you signs, miracles, wonders. He has been healing you, protecting you, taking care of you. That is his public display of affection. How dare you? You who are a sinner. 
every day you get into a matatu drunk driver drives you and you reach safely and you say niliweza kufika you sleep with a hundred women god makes sure you don't catch an aids or an std so that you can just say god had mercy on me and accept him and you still refuse him you have watched porn over and over again wasted money that god has given you on porn and you still refuse him but he still shows his affection towards you oh you say god is not merciful how are you still alive after all your brothers are dead you say god is not merciful god is not forgiving how many things have you done how many debts has god cancelled for you people that you owed and they said i forgive you public display of affection god loves you so much that he invested all his wrath in one moment for all generations on his own son his own son you cannot even cut the finger of your son for your neighbor but he put the knife on the throat of his son for you how dare you say god does not love you how dare you say that god does not care in malachi the bible say your words have been stout against god you have said what use is it to serve the lord why do we give ourselves to his service and we tirelessly give ourselves and work spend our energy on god but god still shows you mercy still shows you love still shows you affection how dare you can't you see how much he loves you can't you see how much he looks at you with mercy his mercy endures forever for you his compassions are new every morning unajua new every morning ina manishaje ulifanya dhambi jana asubuhi bado anakuamsha ulifanya dhambi na ukilala hata ujijui but when you wake up bible say when i wake up i'm still with you his public display of affection